Global Banking and Finance Review Awards reflect the innovation, achievement, strategy, progressive and inspirational changes taking place within the global financial community. The awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes, prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. Today, we're pleased to present awards to BPC Banking for technology innovation. These include Best Banking Technology Solution Provider Philippines 2021, Best New Payment Solutions Provider Europe 2021, Best Banking Technology Solution Provider South Africa 2021, Fastest Growing Banking Technology Solution Provider South Africa 2021, and Best E-Wallet Technology Solution Provider Ivory Coast 2021. BPC supplies banks, processors, merchants, transport operators and other ecosystem players with advanced technologies to create relevant services for their customers. Their customers want fast, easy and secure banking facilities fitting in the context of their business or daily life. These one-touch services are supported by a lot of smart tech. To tell us more about BPC services, we're glad to be able to talk to Jane Loginova in the London office about BPC's success. Well, hello and thank you so much for joining us today. And first of all, I'd like to start by saying congratulations on the awards that your organisation has received. Uh, thanks a lot, Phil. Uh, we're very proud of it. Uh, we have been working really hard uh, to, get the, uh, to get them. Uh, we are very happy that our clients appreciate that and that the industry recognises our effort as well. Well, let's start this discussion by talking about new technologies. There are so many of those at the moment, AI, uh, 5G, cryptocurrencies and so on. What do you see are the potential of those particular services and how it affects economy? Yeah, look, there is a strong focus on customer experience and it has been for a few years now uh, on delivering seamless, frictionless customer service doing it fast, securely, uh, where customer, where possible, has a control and ownership of the process and uh, more importantly of his date or his or her data. And the use of the emerging technologies, um, in some cases not so emerging anymore, that you have just mentioned, are likely to produce that type of customer experience for all sectors alike uh, with a strong impact on our economy. Um, they will actually shape the digital economy we've been referring to for many years. Um, an estimated 70% of new value created in the economy over the next decade will be based on digitally enabled platform uh, business models. Well, thank you for an outline of some of those technologies. How do you think that that new technology can actually give more potential to smaller economies? I think they're quite critical for smaller economies because especially uh, the speed of uh, 5G, uh, the data capacity that that will um, offer, for instance, um, that will just bring the small, the participants of the small economies into the level playing field. It will give them the visibility, it will give them the tools uh, to participate in the digital economy. And um, obviously from there we talk about various, I mean, depending on the business, we're talking about uh, the um, financial inclusion by bringing the financial instruments, the banking uh, instruments um, to the consumer, um, which again, you know, there is a lot of there are a lot of good tools around, but if there is no internet and the speed is not that sufficient, then uh, all of that becomes uh, redundant. So I think you know these fundamental technological rails are quite critical, especially small economies. They're very much dependent on the. Um, you know, the money transfers on the seamless money transfers, and they have been quite expensive right now, um, purely because of the intermediary banks or parties involved in that, uh, obviously collecting fees for the service, you know, blockchain um, uh, and even crypto will take uh, that away. Uh, but again, I think the 5G uh, is probably going to be um, one of the critical um, um, fundamental building blocks um, of the kind of economic growth of the smaller economies. Well, let's take that a stage further. And what does it mean to live under a frictionless economy? Indeed, what exactly is that? And what potential and advantage does that bring? 
Well, look, I mean, uh, I think friction is quite easy to uh, define. I mean, it has many, it has many uh, faces, but I think you and I, um, you know, an example could be us wanting to transfer a certain amount to a, uh, I don't know, our grandmother who lives uh, across the world in a different kind of banking environment. And, uh, you know, you go to your UK sort of high street bank, we're not going to mention any names, mm -hmm. uh, the online uh, services that you can do are still quite limited. But even if, let's say, you're still within a limit of what you can do, uh, be it the amount of what you can send uh, online in one transaction, you then have to have um you know somebody calling you back to verify that it's you these people you know take time to call you um then it's also the fees that they collect right which is why uh companies like wise or revolut have done so well because they've taken one bit of that kind of friction out um on the other and i would say that in the banking space that's friction is something is particularly painful uh, because a lot of people are talking you know now about um, uh, you know the valuable companies that have um, sprung up in the digital banking and the payment space but still uh, the daily kind of trivia of uh, transacting of sending money of operating money of converting money um, is generally still done by people, uh, you know, by people's sort of, um, you know, traditional bank because there's still, I think, not enough trust, um, especially the older population, to move their savings or their say uh, uh, the accounts where they get paid to uh, to some of these more innovative digital providers. I think it's a bit of a kind of mental shift that has to happen. But um, again, dealing uh, with those banks on a daily basis can be quite frustrating, especially when you and I know that there are better, uh, you know, we can get a better service um, elsewhere. So these are the frictions that I kind of talk about. And you want to get to the point of you get the goods, you, or you got the service, and then the checkout process, whatever it is, should be as quick uh, as possible. So how can economies begin to lay the foundations for this new technology and develop it in an appropriate way? Well, in order to meet this demand, banks will need to embrace banking as a service platform models that use APIs to embed really banking in everyday life. They need to be uh, working very closely with various fintechs who produce uh, you know, targeted uh, services uh, and incorporate their services seamlessly into the banking kind of platform. And this will make, you know, services more accessible, uh, inclusive for banking customers and will allow financial institutions to align their offerings uh, with what the end user wants. Well, thank you so much for telling us a little bit about the meaning of some of those technologies. A uh, final question for you, really. What would you see as being the role that BPC can play in making use of that technology in the future? Look, I mean, we will be doing what we have always been doing. I mean, payments enablement has been, uh, you know, the purpose of our existence. And we will carry on acting as an enabler for new banking payment, commerce, and, uh, you know, also mobility uh, experiences. We use emerging but, you know, proven technologies to empower financial institutions, fintechs, in their turn to serve consumers and businesses with the best seamless, secure, and accessible experiences. So we, in our end, want to take away the friction from the businesses that, in the end, serve consumers, to take away that friction where they have to worry about the technology, about the um, the um, provability uh, of the methods that they use uh, to serve their kind of end customer. So we want to, you know, our, again, um, uh, desire is for to really be the rails on which the businesses um, going to seamlessly uh, glide uh, by what I mean by serving uh, their end consumers, uh, which effectively means providing the frictionless, seamless um, experience in payments uh, for you and me, for people. 
Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. Congratulations once again on all those awards for BPC and wishing you every success for the future. Thanks so much, Phil. It was a pleasure.